Continuing south, we come upon our first evidence of direct discharge from the Florida aquifer into Econfina Creek. We also uncover evidence of an ancient estuary. I just love this. This is a really exciting place. This is where the water in the great Florida aquifer first bubbles up in Econfina Creek out of the limestone. There's one of the first springs in this beautiful creek. And it's joining right here the tea stain waters coming downstream from oh many miles upstream where it leaks out of the sand aquifer and runs off from stormwater activity. The two meet here and combine and uh, there's a really wonderful water temperature change over here where the spring is boiling out. It's about 69 degrees Fahrenheit and over here in the tea stain water it's about 76. It's almost a 10 degree temperature difference. Mmm, mmm, it's delicious. Unfortunately, you can love a beautiful place like this to death. And that's what happened to this bank. People have come in here to swim and enjoy the water in this little spring, but too many folks have climbed the bank and abused it, destroyed the vegetation. And you know, that's really a no-no. We need to learn to use our resources better than that. Look what we have here, the lion's paw scallop. I don't think it exists today. In fact, we have a whole bunch of mollusks, including an oyster species that is not found today. And the reason they're not found today is because these were part of an ancient bay two to three million years ago. These clams and other shells are in that clay layer that confines the surficial aquifer on top of the limestone that has the Florida aquifer just upstream a little bit where we first saw that spring. And we're about to run out of this now and just have nothing but limestone and springs. We are so lucky in Florida to have such great aquatic treasures like this. This is Devil's Hole in Southern Washington County. It's about 40 feet deep, uh, according to some who have dove it. And you know what? This belongs to all the people of Florida. It's owned by and managed by the Northwest Florida Water Management District. Before it was publicly owned land, places like this get full of old cars, washing machines, all kinds of junk, trash, beer cans, and all sorts of things that pollute it. Now it has been cleaned up and it is an absolutely exquisite gem of natural history. And you know what? A place like this is such a treasure. Now that it's managed for publicly owned land, they allow you to appreciate it and enjoy it. You can camp here. You can examine the beautiful wildlife in the surrounding area. And guess what else you can do? You can enjoy a lovely swim in one of Florida's fantastic sinkholes. Detouring away from Econ Fina Creek, we travel five miles west for a glimpse directly into the Floridan aquifer. I'm standing in the deadening. This is a place where water collects and forms a shallow lake basin. But during dry times like now, most of that water percolates down through the sand and reaches the Floridan aquifer in the limestone underneath this. And guess where that water finally comes out? Econfina Creek. That water flows four to five miles, taking six to eight weeks. In 2004, this big lake basin was way over my head. This part of the deadening, when water stands here, it averages up to 10 to 12 feet deep. 
You can see that abundantly on all the cypress trees here. I'm in another part of the deadening. I came here especially to demonstrate something. The water in the deadening does in fact go underground and right here's the proof of it. This is a sinkhole that formed in the bottom of the deadening be because there was a cavity underneath that collapsed, exposing the Florida aquifer right there. And that water, if you put a dye in it, will go all the way to Econ Fina Creek. And when the water comes back in this lake, guess where the bass and the brim and the catfish and the turtles will all come from? I see them right there hanging on in that aquifer water. They'll recolonize this whole lake from places just like that. Just on the deadening southern boundary, you'll see the successful collaboration between water management and equestrian enthusiasts. This property has long been popular with local horseback riders. However, starting in 2000, an influx of new residents was threatening to undo some of the district's erosion control and habitat restoration sites. We had a lot of people moving from the cities to the rural areas. They were moving adjacent to our public lands, and nearly everyone was bringing a horse with them, our horses. We started having more and more adverse impacts, and we knew we had to get it under some sort of, of regulation. Your overall mission was to protect water resources naturally, but at the same time allow for recreational use, uh, primarily horseback riding and to develop uh, single-use trails for the equestrian users. The district met with local users to encourage the development of a designated, environmentally friendly trail system. Adoption of rules and regulations would ensure that users ride on designated trails and limit impact to water resources. The key to success would be a stakeholder involvement and a working model. And so what we tried to do was uh, pattern uh, our equestrian group after the Florida Trail Association, a bunch of volunteers that would go out and develop these trails. One of the most enthusiastic volunteers is longtime resident Sylvia Gates. Right now on the water management property, there's five trails, and they might uh, go 85 miles or better. Sylvia and a group of roughly 20 to 25 volunteers have worked over the past four years to create and maintain a system of trails that is compatible with the district's water resource mission. This is a volunteer organization. They do all the work, provide them with minimal signs and paint. They do all the work and we meet with them to approve the trails. So there's very few public dollars uh, expended for developing of this, these recreational trails. If it wasn't for these lands that water management, you know, is um, letting us ride on, we wouldn't have no place to ride. We'd be riding on the side of the road, and that's against the law. In the four years since the volunteer work began, the Pine Ridge Equestrian Camp and Trail has become a favorite destination. A nice variety of people love to ride these trails. These trails can cater to everybody. I actually even ride with a couple of ladies that are in their 70s. I get phone calls from people from out of town, at Alabama and other places, uh, want maps and to come ride our trails because they've heard they're really, really nice. Moving back east towards the creek, we come across a hydrologic feature that's not only impressive for its size, but also as a source of clean water recharge for Econ Fina Creek. Ah, uh, yes. One of my favorite places, not only in Florida, but on the entire planet. This is a steep head. Steep, indeed, by that 45 degree angle slope. That's partly what defines it. And in steep heads, you have some tremendously 
unique vegetation beginning from the very top of the steep head where the driest soils are. You'll get laurel oak, tree sparkleberry, wild olive, all kinds of plants that really can survive in exceedingly dry soil. And then as you come down in the middle of the slope where the soil is slightly moister, you get a moisture loving group of plants, including things like southern magnolia, American beech, and a wealth of other species right along this mid zone. But as you go to the bottom of the slope where the soils are very moist, we have wetland plants, star anise, sweet bay magnolia, and tall gallberry. And now, let's go see what's at the bottom. <laughs> and this is what it's all about. <laughs> Clean, potable water coming right out of a very steep valley sidewall. That valley sidewall, which forms the head of this valley, a steep head, is what a steep head is all about. And this water, which is leaking from the porous sands here, is carrying, sand grain at a time, the sediment that forms that wall with it downstream. As it does, it causes the, the bank, or the valley sidewall, to slump in. And you can see in this particular case, there was a big tree rooted here. Well, the tree and, and its roots have all fallen down as it was undercut by the stream. And now, because there's still sandy soil there, the stream continues to pull that sand away, the tree will die and rot, and the head of this little valley will continue to march headward. <laughs> Just a mile east of that magnificent steephead, we come to Quail Run Plantation. Previous owners, Whitey Urquhart and Bill Perry, sold a conservation easement, or special protection agreement, on their 1,600-acre tract to the Northwest Florida Water Management District in 2003. Conservation easements are just another tool in the toolbox for water resource protection purposes. In addition to acquiring land and fee simple and outright ownership and management, we can also go in uh, and especially uh, properties that may have a high per acre land value, uh, especially properties next to springs or some really uh, uh, developable river systems and we can buy that owner's development or land use conversion rights at about half the uh, cost of a fee simple transactions. Their property stays on the tax rolls, the district doesn't have to manage it, and uh, we still protect water resources at half the cost. We started off with about 16, 1700 acres and now we've wound up with about 1200 acres. We wanted this property preserved, if possible, forever. And through that conservation easement, we achieved that goal. And it's given us a lot of insight into things that we could do to improve what we already had. Well, the easement requires that we allow no toxic substances here. We don't pave any roads within this place. It's restricted as far as development is concerned. There can be no development, no uh, subdivisions or anything like that is to be maintained in its natural state. The easement is just like the, the land lines. It's, it's part of the property, so we feel good about that. We feel good about the fact that the easement that we sold to the state of Florida will always be a part of this piece of property. Our hunting is quail hunting. Now we have a lot of deer, we have a lot of turkey, squirrels and stuff. We hunt nothing but quail. We've got to have good, pure, clean water as well as they can do it. And this you can find a creek, which I understand we are a part of the recharge area, is the biggest provider of water to Deer Point Lake, which provides the water for Tyndall, Panama City, other municipalities, and is a quite a good supply of good water. 
I think it is a wonderful thing for me and Bill and for the future. You know, the way the country and the state of Florida and the panhandle is on its way, growing with people. And I'd like to see some places later on that were as natural for our descendants and others as it has been for us.